So Dark Table 4 is out. Let's have a look at what's new and what's changed. I'm Nicholas and let's go. Welcome to Dark Table 4.0. In this release we have a couple of big, well major changes from the previous version 3.8. The first one is the um, ability to map colours and exposition between photos. So this photo on the right has been edited, the one on the left has not. So I'll just show this quickly, may not be the best example, but however, this is how it works. The spot exposure mapping and exposure now is a new option. I can choose the measure and then I will get a picker here and choose a square, say the flower. And I want to have the same tones between the flower on this photo and the same flower on the previous one. So it has measured the light. Um, L45.4% on this picture. And while we're at it, let's go into color calibration, where we have the spot color mapping, sorry, here, spot color mapping, which is open. And I will go to measure, and I will, this is black here in this square, and I'll take the, uh, the picker here, and I'll measure the, um, the hue of this, um, the, the the color of this uh, square so we have here we have um a hue that can be copied into the next photo so that's for the measuring then you go into the photo where you want to match the colors and the uh the exposition and here we go into so correction is automatically chosen just take the picker choose an area of the same flower and that will map the previous colors um, onto this photo and it works as well in exposure where I'll go to correction choose the picker move the picker to the flower and it will copy the same um, exposure from one photo to the other so that is the spot exposure mapping and here we have the spot color mapping so that is new to version 4 Next on the list of major changes we have in Filmic RGB in the options we now have access to a V6. So this photo was edited with a V5 initially and you can see there is a big change in the highlights between the previous versions. We have if you look at V5 let's go to V4, 3, 2 there's not much change between 3, 4, 5 or when you go to 6 there is something quite different between the two. Now the notes, if I go to the notes here, the release notes, it does say that V6 introduces a new color science. It removes the mandatory desaturation close to medium white and black, and we have true color mapping against the output, more export color space. So we have more saturated color, and the gamut sanitization um, is now, um, Sorry, we have a fully sanitized color pipeline. Um, so uh, that does introduce a shift in colors in the sunsets. That's the thing I have noticed. I haven't noticed in every single photo. Um, so there might be a either you like the look or you want to go back to something more uh, orange. That's far too yellow, maybe. Um, so there we are. V6, um, major differences between v5 and v6 the third big change we have in v4 is in the highlight reconstruction tab and we have a new method to um, reconstruct highlights so we had lch and color and now we have guided laplacians now laplacians are what the module which is called diffuse or sharpen uses i went through this in detail on the video on diffuse or sharpen explaining that Laplacians use the gradient in the data um, and um, this is what this module does to try and reconstruct data that is missing uh, from the photo um, by the way this um, the raw overexposure has been reworked and is now more accurate apparently so here you can see I have data missing in the reds data missing in the red we have uh, now a little button to see what 
uh, this uh, module is uh, actually working on, what it's looking at. Um, so it is a method. I haven't had great success with it in uh, very extreme cases. I need to work on that a little bit more. But it is there and it will help Filmic. Uh, Filmic has a highlight reconstruction uh, tab too. And they're both working together. Should theoretically give us better results. There's another major change which is a little bit invisible. It is used by the Colour Balance RGB module. It is the new colour space called UCS 2022. It's explained here. UCS 22, a perceptually uniform colour space designed from psycho perceptual experimental data. And it compensates for the Helmholtz Kohlrausch effect. Now, what is that? Wikipedia explains to us that this Helmholtz Kohlrausch effect means that we see, when we look at these colours, we see this red as being brighter than the yellow, which is here, and the magenta we see being brighter. Um, why do we see it brighter? Because it is. Um, more saturated. The more saturated it is, the more uh, we perceive that as being bright. So this new um, colour space will try and even things out to give us a, a more robust uh, method of working with colours. So that's a little bit under the hood, but it is a big change to be mentioned. Now there are quite a few smaller modifications, improvements in Dark Table 4. Uh, the first one, if you go in the colour picker, what can I mention? If you have a look at this overlay, uh, we have the RGB LAB values and we have an error text saying this is blue violet. So um, that colour text wasn't there before and it's to help people who are colour blind um, to uh, work with colours. So that's a good thing to have in the grid overlay. We have here, there is a new button. So if you right click on that, we have a new contrast button where you can see the grid um, powerfully or it'll kind of fade away. So we have a new contrast on the grid. That makes things a bit more comfortable. There is a new support for EXR um, format, uh, image format, EXR being a high dynamic range format. We have, um, let's go back to another photo where I don't have diffuse or sharpen. Um, we have now in these sliders, so when you move these, we can now use shift, which will move things much faster. If I stay pressed on shift, and if I press on control, I will be able to control them better, which means the movements will be smaller. And I think shift control works too. Um, I'm not quite sure yet whether that is faster or slower than shift, than just control. I'll have to check on that, but now we can use the modifiers for the sliding. Um, I showed you before the new button in highlight reconstruction there, which wasn't there before, the new gamut, um, no, the raw clipping, which is more robust, there isn't any here, and there are many more, many more changes. If we go to the release notes on github.com, darktable.org, the list is here. We have all the list in the UI, the performance. Um, we have, uh, well, the list is long. I um, suggest if you want to see all the details, you can read that. I have shown you the main ones. The only one I need to show you now is and the last one for this video is the new collection filters module on the left here, which is separate from collections, which enables you to choose just with a click if you want all the five stars without going into, you know, you could do that by here, collections and with the metadata. Now we have a fast way to do it. It's the same thing as we have up here. You can actually make them appear and disappear with a little pin there. So if I want just the five star photos and then I can further refine by color label. So if I refine by blue, then there's only this photo left. And if you right click, where is it? Right click all images and remove that and we get it. Click on the gray. 
Let's all of it. Let's. I know I don't want to click on to get it all back again. Anyway, it works. I think that's all we need to say. It's this one full. Hold on, everyone none, and this one is right click and all images. A bit different. Anyway, never mind. It works. We have filters. That's quick. So that's it for this um, quick presentation of Dark Table 4. Uh, all that remains to do is to thank the developers for all the hard work they have done. Remind you that these uh, the developers work on this project for free. They give their time, they listen, they spend a lot of time in uh, discussions um, trying to make the software as best as we as they can. So I think we need to thank them for all the hard work and I'll let you discover Darktable 4 and enjoy it for yourselves. Okay, well I'll see you soon.